Here, let's bring in uh, a, a member of the Notre Dame community, and that is a professor of sociology there, Dr. Richard uh, Williams. Uh, professor Williams, your sense uh, of the mood among uh, the students uh, and the faculty at Notre Dame about the president's visit and the controversy over it? Uh, sure, Chris. Um, Eighty percent of the students in that room have done service work during their time at Notre Dame. Another ten percent are going to spend at least another year doing service after they leave here. I have a student in there right now who's going to be with Teach for America next year. I have another student who spent a semester doing post-recovery work in Katrina and a third student who's going to be working with the uh, large community and the disabled. I don't know if those students are pro-life or pro-choice. I've never asked them. But I do know that either way, they have worked to promote life during their time here at Notre Dame, and thousands of other students have joined them. And whether they are pro-life or pro-choice, I think they're very upset that somebody like Randall Terry comes in and tells them they've been doing it all wrong for the last four years. That being pro-life or pro-choice just boils down to uh, whether you are for or against graphic images of aborted fetuses. They have been working, besides working on their studies, they've been working on pro-life, promoting life for the last four years, and they are not very happy that somebody is going to come in today and try to disrupt their ceremony. Um, whether our students are pro-life, I mean, our pro-life students know that if all you do is uh, tell people you have to have babies whether you want them or not, they're not gonna be very successful. Uh, our pro-choice students know that uh, if somebody wants to choose life and they don't have the support or the encouragement to do so, you haven't given them much of a choice. Uh, our, our students are, take this far more seriously and have thought about this much more carefully and worked much harder than Randall Terry has. Well, let me, let me uh, Professor Williams, let me bring in Father Jonathan. Uh, your reaction to what Professor Williams is saying? Well, let me, let me say very clearly, there's no doubt that uh, I don't think anybody would want us to suggest that Catholic doctrine or Christian doctrine is boiled down to a one issue. Uh, it's not. And I think uh, the professor said it very well. Uh, we have to be pro-life in all areas. But it's not indifferent when you talk about, well, uh, can this person choose to kill a life because they don't see how they're going to be able to take care of that life well. We have to do a much better job as a in government and politics and in the Catholic Church and in Christian communities of taking care of life from the moment of conception till natural death. But let's not suggest that therefore when tough times come, we can just well make an easier decision. And I think that is fundamentally uh, the church's position. But, but Father Jonathan, I'm, uh, uh, Professor Williams, I've got to bring you back in in a moment. How, uh, how are Catholics who may well be pro-life uh, and, and very much oppose the president's position on abortion, how are they, they to balance that with the fact that on a number of other issues like immigration reform or global warming or social uh, uh, works for the poor, that those are a lot of policies that they, of the presidents that they support. Is that a, can you balance that or are you saying that once you are on the wrong side of, of, of abortion that there is no balancing act? Thank you, no, there, of course there has to be a balancing act. It's a question of supporting the president in every single way that we can. But another thing is saying because he does good on many things, therefore, well, we're going to let this other one pass. And that's what President Obama is trying to do here. He's thinking about 2012. He's trying to split the Catholic vote and say, hey, listen, let's set aside our differences. And then at the same time, and we'll watch him do this, Chris, I believe, he's going to say, you set it aside, but watch me, let, watch me bring it up in my speech. And I'm going to say, I'm going to work on one hand in my policy to promote abortion, and on the other hand, I'm going to say I want it rare and that I'm not for it. That's what we have to watch out. In my opinion, it's hypocrisy. Uh, and, and briefly, uh, Professor Williams, how do you respond to that? It's very true that uh, uh, Barack Obama supports the right to choose, but uh, for 20, the last 28 years, we have been led by presidents who wanted to take that choice away. And where did it get us? Look, you know, we can try to reverse Roe v. Wade. We can uh, try to uh, criminalize abortion. And if we criminalize abortion, we can try to get people to obey those bans. Those strategies have not worked very well in the past. I'm not optimistic about them for the future. I think Barack Obama has the potential to do more for the pro-life cause than any president in history. 
Yes, he supports the rights to choose, but he is going to do everything he can to get people to choose life. And I think eventually, in, in the long run, that's going to be a far more effective strategy than simply focusing on banning abortion.